Recordings in progress, so everyone behave themselves. All right, very good. So before I get started on the, the topic today of what real estate agents can learn from Olympic athletes, I, I thought of this as the Olympics are going on, and I, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Before I, I, I mention that, uh, Neil had talked a little bit about this morning, and he mentioned that him and I had a conversation this morning. So I just want to bring to light a little bit of this is as agents, it's more important than ever that we're educators to our clients and to just the general public, because I don't remember a time that was ever more confusing to the general public of what's going on. I mean, the world in general, but real estate is something. So I'll give you an example. I, I mentioned this story to some of you. Yesterday, I, I, I'm not a big social media guy, but I do subscribe to a number of business sites. And in the mornings, I don't watch the news or anything like that, but I do see what's going on in the business world, some of which are real estate. So I, I know what's going on. So yesterday, I'm scrolling through these business sites and I see a headline article that says, housing market still hot, you should buy now. Okay, great. That was the headline. I didn't read the article. I just saw it was a headline. So there's that one, and then there's a, a business article next, and then the very next one. So two articles later. Oh, sorry. There you go. They're telling me to keep it. Tell me to keep it down. I told I told uh, Laura that if I get loud, tell me to keep it down, and she's saying keep it down, Robert. All right. So um, two articles later was a real estate article with the headline that says housing boom officially over. So I got one article that says housing market still hot by now, two articles later, housing boom is officially over. The point of this is, this is what the public sees. So they are so confused. They have no idea what's going on. Is it a good time to buy? Is it a good time to sell? Is the boom over? Is it still going crazy? Is our interest rates up? Are interest rates going down? Is this affecting this? Is this affecting this? They have no idea. It's very confusing. So, and these are all from reputable sources. This is not, I'm not subscribing to, you know, Bob's real estate market in a Delaware blog. You know, this is reputable stuff. So we need to be out there being the educators. Let me tell you about what you're not interested in buying or selling. That's fine. Let me educate you on at least what's going on. So A, you know, in case you are looking to buy or sell and B, that way you're educated. So if somebody asks you what's going on, you can give them the right information. So maybe they're looking to do something. So that, that's what we were talking about. So we're gonna, we're gonna work more on that in the next few days, but we have to be educators. Okay, so let's go into this. So the Olympics are going on. And my guess is that, is anybody watching the Olympics? Couple, yeah, iffy. Not really. No. Yeah, yeah, it's- no. Certainly one of those years. I am. Patty's watching them. A couple people watching them. It's certainly one of those years where it just feels a little different. The Olympics, obviously, with everything going on in the world. And, you know, you know, in some cases, not all the best athletes are there. Not all the best athletes are performing. It just, it's a little odd what's, what's going on. So I'm not as actively watching it as normal, but I am paying at least a little bit of attention and things like that. And normally I would get into the Olympics. I love track, both men and women's track, because I just find it fascinating that people can run so fast uh, or jump so high or things like that. Uh, you know, but I get it. I think it's funny, not funny, but I think it's interesting. There are some sports in the Olympics that Yeah, I, uh, your line is breaking up. I think is it just me or him? It's yeah. it's probably me. So, anyways, so as I'm going through this, though, I'm I'm writing down all these things because that's just the way my mind works. Of there's a number of things that real estate agents can learn from Olympic athletes, and I, I wrote down a list of things here. Some of them are very obvious. 
there's some of them that, that might kind of do a little bit of a mind change or help mindset a little bit and things along those lines. So the first thing I wrote down here on what real estate agents can learn from Olympic athletes is it doesn't matter if nobody's done it in your family before you can be the first. It doesn't matter if nobody's done it in, done it in your family before you can be the first. Meaning that it doesn't matter if no one in your family has made a million dollars. Doesn't matter if anyone in your family's never made two hundred thousand dollars. Never. It doesn't matter if no one in your family has ever owned their own house because we have people that do that. Doesn't matter if someone in your family matter if someone in your family has never done it. You can do it. So I bring this up because this year at the Olympics, there was a, a Philippine weightlifter, Hidalyn Diaz. She won the gold medal in her weightlifting division. And it was the first gold medal ever for the Philippines, ever, in all the Olympics. No one from the Philippines has ever won a gold medal. Until she did this year in the weightlifting competition. So that's where it comes into play. It didn't matter that no one's ever won it from her country before. She was going to be the first. She didn't let her mindset go into play that, well, I'm going there for second place. No, her mindset when they talked to her was, I came here to win. I know that no one in my country has ever won, but I came here to win and I knew I could win. She didn't accept the fact that sec just being there was great. Participating and representing my country was great. No, no, no. She wanted to win and she expected to win. We run into the same thing. You can't use that well, my parents were not big on education. So it doesn't mean you can't read books. My parents were, were very frugal with money. They were just get a government job, nine to five, get your pension, get your vacation pay. You're good. Doesn't mean you can't have that entrepreneurial mentality of being a real estate agent running a successful business. Mike Ferry talks about this all the time, about how his parents, now inflation obviously is a little bit different, but at the time, his parents were teachers making $7,000 a year, and they were encouraging him to go be a teacher. Very stable job, good job. You know, you get your pay, you get your vacation time, you get your benefits, go do that. And he was like, I'm not going to do that for $7,000 a year. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. And he went out and did it. But so it didn't matter that no one in his family had done it. It was a really important factor. Don't let the fact that no one else in your family has done something be the reason you don't do it. Okay. Just like this gal from the Philippines did not let the fact that no one from her country had ever won a gold medal prevent her from winning a gold medal. The second thing I wrote down on what real estate agents can learn from the Olympics is that don't, don't let your age, don't let your age get in the way of your success. Don't let your age get in the way of your success. You can be the greatest no matter how old you are. So give an example. So I had to look this up. In Olympic history, the youngest gold, the youngest gold medalist. Does anyone want to take a guess on the age of the youngest gold medalist in Olympic history? 17. 12. 15. 14. I was going to say 12 too. S 17. This is pretty. The, oh, there you go. The number is, so you've all said everything around 13. No one said 13, but you said 12, 14, 15, 16, and 17. So you were all very close. Good job. But 13, 13 years old was the youngest gold medalist in Olympic history. So what's the oldest 
gold medalist in Olympic history? 73. Who wants to take a shot at that? 47. 73. Okay. What else? 71. 71. This is actually really funny because you're all around it again, except for the exact number. 78. No. I heard 71 and 73. 72. 72. <laughs> Seventy-two years old is the oldest Olympic medalist in history. So here it is, the Olympics, the best of the best in the world at each individual competition. And if you're the best in the world, you get a gold medal. Okay. In the world, you're number one. And the youngest person to ever do it was 13. And the oldest person to ever do it was 72. Don't let age be the reason you're not the gold medal real estate agent in your market. Well, Robert, I'm only, I'm only 21 years old. I just got my real estate license. So go be the best real estate agent in your market. Well, Robert, I'm 65, 70 years old. You know, I can't be the best in my market anymore. Well, you're right, if that's what you think. But a 72 year old thought he could be the best shooter. That was the competition shooting. It could be the best shooter in the world at 72. Now think about this. This is what makes it even more fascinating. It's shooting, which requires pristine eyesight. Now, generally speaking, does your eyesight get better as you get older? No. And yet at 72 years old, in a profession that requires you to have pristine eyesight to hit a target, he won a gold medal. Do not let your age determine your success. You can be a good real estate agent. You can be a great real estate agent. You can be what a gold medal real estate agent, no matter what age you're at, no matter what age you're starting at. You can be the best in your marketplace at any age. The Olympics show us that. Because there's gold medalists in history between 13 and 72. Now, there's no 13-year-old real estate agents. Okay? So you got to be at least 18. But don't let age be the reason that you're not successful. That just doesn't make any sense. The Olympics show us that. Okay. The next thing I wrote down here in terms of what real estate agents can learn from the Olympics <clears throat> is that it doesn't matter where you're from. This kind of goes a little bit to number one is you could be the first in your family. But I wrote down here, there's no barriers to winning. There's no barriers to winning, meaning that it doesn't matter where you're from. Doesn't matter what language you speak. Doesn't matter if you're male or female. Makes no difference whatsoever you can still win a medal in the Olympics. So in real estate, it doesn't matter if you're from America. You can come here and make a boatload of money. It doesn't matter if you don't speak English very well. You can come here and make a boatload of money. It doesn't matter if you're, from, if you're male or female. There's no gender barrier. You can come here and make a boatload of money. In the Olympics, this year, there are 86 countries that have won a, a, at least one medal. 86 countries, which means there's 86 different languages standing on the podium, receiving medals. And that's now, in the, and that's including male and females. So you could be from Syria and still go be one of the best people in the world to go get a medal. And you could be from Syria, go to Tokyo, not speak any of the language and still be able to stand on the podium because the one thing that everyone speaks is gold. 
A person in Syria might not be able to have a conversation with the person in Tokyo giving them the medal, but everyone recognizes the color gold around their neck. You may not be a, you, English may not be your first language and you may not be able to speak language very well, speak English very well. You may not be able to understand English very well, but everyone recognizes the green in your wallet. You may speak English perfectly, born and raised here in Southern California. And you can have clients that don't speak English very well. What they recognize is the green in your wallet. You rec they recognize your work ethic. They recognize that you're the best person to help them. It's not a language barrier. It's not where you're from. It's not a culture barrier because people come from all over the world to merge into one place, can't communicate with each other, but they all recognize the talent and they all recognize the gold. Over 80 countries have won gold medals or have won medals in the Olympics. So don't use your background, don't use your history, your language barriers, your accents, the fact that you're male or female, that you understand people, you don't understand people. Oh, I live in an area that's very, that's, you know, very international, whatever the case may be. Those are all excuses. Didn't, didn't stop the person from Ghana. Ghana's won one medal. Didn't stop the person from Ghana flying out to Tokyo to say, I'm one of the best in the world. I'm going to go prove it. Don't let the culture be the reason that you're not successful. Okay. Just doesn't make any sense. All right. I wrote down here next, what real estate agents can learn from Olympic athletes to be the best at something. You can't be great at everything. To be the best at something, you can't be great at everything. Because the person who won the gold in the 400 meters does not spend any time trying to be a good soccer player. The person who won the gold in fencing does not practice or try to be really good at basketball and vice versa. To be the best, the absolute best at something, you can't be good at everything. So what I wrote down here is accept the fact that if you want to be a top level listing agent, or a top level buyer's agent or whatever it is, you can't also be good at being an escrow officer. You can't also be good at being a loan officer. You can't also be the person to go to for title. You can't also be the best photographer. That's not your job. To be the best, to be an Olympic level athlete. And in this case, an Olympic level real estate agent, you have to put your focus into being great at one thing. And for some of you, that one thing is putting all your focus on how to go on a team or just as a person, then you need to put all your focus in how to go be the best buyer's agent. But it's not Oh, I want to, you know, I want to be a listing agent, but gosh, I got to spend, you know, I really want to learn all about title. So that way, if a client asks me about title, I can answer it. No, it's a waste of your time. Well, I want to be able to know what all the escrow documents say. No. Well, I want, really want to know what the interest rates are. And if the credit score is this, how does it affect? Why? No. The Olympic athlete, the gold medalist in the 400 meters would never say, you know what? I'm going to go practice. I'm going to go practice fencing today. What am I going to do today? Oh, you don't want to practice running? Ah. Let's go fence. Yeah, let's go do that today. You know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to go weight lift. I'm going to weight lift today. See if I can bench 400 pounds. Snap my legs so I can't run anymore. Good, good idea. They don't do that. Pick the thing that you need to be great at and go be great at it and delegate all the other stuff because the loan officer that you work with should have that same mentality. 
you should pick a loan officer to work with that has that same mentality that they are only focused at being a great loan officer, which means they should be way better than you at doing loans and answering loan questions, which means you should be able to delegate to them because if you don't delegate to them, you're doing a disservice to your client because you're answering loan questions knowing there's somebody better and more qualified to do it. That would be like the track star. And they said, hey, we need a basketball player to join the team. You want to do that? You know what? I think I'm going to let Kevin Durant go take care of that. I think that's a better option for you. You should have Kevin Durant take that shot. That's what you're doing. When you don't delegate, you're actually doing a disservice to your client. You're trying to answer all the escrow questions. You're doing a disservice when there's an escrow officer. That's what they do for a living. And if your escrow officer doesn't have that Olympic mentality that I'm going to be the best escrow officer, because imagine if your escrow officer started answering real estate questions, how would you feel about that? How would you feel if your client asked the escrow officer, what do you think about the real estate market? And the escrow officer started answering questions. You'd be pissed because you have somebody less qualified than you talking to your client about it. That's what you're doing when you're answering escrow questions, title questions, loan questions, HOA questions, insurance questions. Don't do that. Be great at one thing. Let everyone else take their place. All right, the next thing I wrote down here, what real estate agents can learn from Olympic athletes is Participating is not good enough. You have to want to win. Participating is not good enough. You have to want to win. What I mean by that is when you watch Olympic athletes, think about this. The Olympics are only once every four years. So I'm training for the Olympics. I'm training every day for four years. I mean, obviously you're training even longer than that, but four years I'm training for one event. So think about this. What if it's the hundred meter dash, which is 10, the race lasts 10 seconds. I'm training four years for a 10 second race. Do you think that those Olympic athletes are training four years to just say, ah, oh, it's an honor to be here. Hell no. <laughs> I'm, I'm training four years. I haven't had a carb in four years. I haven't had a beer in four years. I haven't, you know, gone partying in four years. You know, I haven't done any of these things. I've taken care of myself the most I can for four years. Just showing up, I'm not, that's not good enough. Being happy, just happy to be invited, not good enough. I'm here to win. Because if I don't win, then I have to wait another four years. And depending on your age, you might not get it. Depending on your age, four years, you might be done. There might be somebody faster, bigger, stronger, depending on the, the job, depending on the thing, can do more things. I mean, think about it, okay? Four years ago, were you slightly more agile than you are today? Okay, so now try to be a gymnast doing backflips. And then saying, oh, four years from now, you're going to be able to do the same backflips at the same level, right? Uh. <laughs> I don't know, man. Four years changes the flexibility a little bit. So they're there to win. You have to have that mentality that I'm here to win. Just getting a listing appointment, it, it's not good enough. I'm just honored that you even gave me a chance to interview. That's not good enough. I'm here to get your listing. I don't care that you're interviewing another agent. I don't care that you're doing me a favor by interviewing me because I was referred to you. I'm here to win. Oh, I'm just excited that my buyer's offer was in the top five. No, I'm here to win. I'm here to get your offer accepted. 
So you have to shift that mentality to that Olympic where it's like, I only have this once every four years. So imagine if you were going on a listing appointment and I said, this is the only listing appointment you're going to get for the next four years. How would you treat that listing appointment? You would do everything possible to get it. You would know the stats better than anyone. You would pre-qualify. You would send a pre-listing package. You would be dressed to impress. You would know everything that's going on, what's sold, what's expired, what the comps are like. You would know the days on market. You would know your scripts inside and out, upside and down. You would not walk away if they gave you a rejection. You would handle it and you would keep closing, keep closing, keep closing because you know, I only have, I only have a chance to do this once every four years. Treat, treat your listings, treat your buyers the same way that an Olympian has to treat their event. I only get one shot at this every four years. I'm here to win. I'm here to give it my all. I'm not going to screw this up. Shift that mentality a little bit. Shift that mentality a little bit. I wrote down here, next point, on what real estate agents can learn from Olympic athletes. You can't do it alone. Can't do it alone. There is no athlete at the Olympics that doesn't have either a coach, a trainer, accountability partner, something helping them along the way. You cannot do it alone. You have to accept the fact that you're going to take coaching seriously, that you're going to take your accountability partner seriously, that you're going to take whatever your trainer says seriously. Okay. If you're, and that's, and that's in all aspects of things, because part of being a good real estate agent, you have to be in decent health. So if you have someone, if you have a nutritionist or a personal trainer for your fitness, you have to listen to what they say. You can't do it alone. None of these Olympic athletes are there all by themselves. They did all the training by themselves. They did all the help by themselves. They didn't have any accountability partners. They didn't have anything along those lines. So I wrote down here for a real estate agent. Okay, you you got coaching. That's fine. Take advantage of the coaching. Be okay with the criticism. But I wrote down here, have some accountability partners. Have some people that can cheer you on have some people that can help you along the way because if you're just trying to be the superstar gold medal real estate agent and you're not if you don't have anyone around you helping you guiding you cheering for you it's just not going to happen you can be okay but you have to accept help you have to accept criticism you have to accept coaching you have to accept training you have to accept accountability that's what it takes to be an olympic athlete the ones that don't do it they're not there they don't make the cut in real estate the ones that don't accept accountability don't accept coaching don't accept training they don't make the cut it's all part of the gig and everyone there has them so you have to accept that you can't do it alone it is a group effort even though just like in real estate a lot of these events are single events you know there's like the relays which is a team event but most of them the sprinters it's just it's you man it's you lady it's you against the world be the fastest or not but even those individual people have accountability have coaching have training things along those lines all right so a couple more points here a couple more points i wrote down to be the best, energy and enthusiasm is important. To be the best, energy and enthusiasm is important. So here's what I mean by that. When you watch the Olympic athletes, when they're preparing for the event, what are they doing? Are they just sitting there going, okay, I'm super calm and 
I'm just going to get ready to go do this dive. And we're going to see what happens. No, they're pacing. They're moving around. They're jumping up and down. They're talking to people. They're psyching themselves up. Okay. They're cheering each other on. They're doing handshakes. They got music going on. They're, they're, they're energized. They're enthusiastic. They're like, all right, let's go. I'm ready. When they do something good, do they just go, okay, cool. Great. Thanks. No, they're cheering. They're going, they're, they're loud. They're yeah. When they get the medal, their, their hands are up. They're excited. They're vocalizing it. They're energetic. They're enthusiastic about the whole event. During the opening ceremonies, people are walking, they're, they're walking up, they're kind of bouncing around, they're running around, they got big smiles on their face. They're energetic and enthusiastic. To be the best, you need energy and enthusiasm. Just like in real estate, because what do we know about real estate? Energy and enthusiasm will beat just skills almost every single time. And I guarantee you at the Olympics, there are, there's somebody, guarantee you, that's probably more skilled than other people in their competition, but that person, but they don't get the gold because someone else was more energetic, enthusiastic about winning it. You need the skills, but you need the energy and enthusiasm even more. You have to have it. You have to have it at the Olympics. You have to have it here. Energy and enthusiasm wins the game. It wins the sale. You need it. You absolutely need it. Okay. The last point I wrote down here, what real estate agents can learn from Olympic athletes is you don't have to be a jerk. You don't have to be a jerk. So here's what I mean by that. It's amazing how many times I see people at the podium for a variety of different events. And like I said, they're from different countries. They speak different languages. And at the podium, the three people that get the, the gold, the medal, the gold, the silver, and the bronze, how much they're embracing each other. Hey, congratulations. And the, the, the silver medalist is hugging the gold medalist. You know what? It was a great competition. Congratulations for winning. They're going to the bronze. Like they're just totally embracing the fact that, hey, you won. I got a medal. I'm, I'm, you know, I wanted to win, but you know what? It was fair. We played well. And, and I appreciate the competition. And, and how every, there's so often all these people are just, Hey, look, you know, it's a competition. I want to win, but we don't have to be mean about it. The gold medalist never goes up to the silver medalist and says, hey, look, huh, huh? You didn't get one of these, did you? Mocking them. They don't ever give them the cold shoulder. They don't ever, oh, yes, I'm the gold medalist. Ha, 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 ha. Look at me. Peasants below me with silver. Okay. I don't know why I did that in an English accent. It just came to me. <laughs> But it's a camaraderie thing. So in real estate, it's the same thing, right? You go on a listing presentation. If the other agent beats you fair and square, you don't go, oh, pfft. you don't say mean things about them. You don't talk bad about them. They won. You beat them the next time. You got other agents. You don't talk bad about the other agents. Even if you don't like them, you deal with them because it's all part of the business. You don't have have to be mean about it. You don't have to be a jerk about it. You don't have to badmouth people. You don't have to treat people poorly. Even if you're the best, I won the listing. You don't call the other agents and tell them about it. If the other agent who has a buyer, you don't say, oh, oh, I saw, you, I saw that you submitted a buyer offer. Wish you had the listing, huh? Like you don't rub it in their face. You don't send them messages on Instagram or things like that. You don't have to be mean about it. Everyone can be fine. Martin Lawrence, right? Can't we all just get along? You know, like it's part of the process. And these people are competing at the highest level. So 
be respectful to the people in your industry. Be respectful to the people in your business. Okay. It's just, it's just good ethics. It's good manners. It's a good way to be. Okay. They do it at the Olympics all the time. We could do it the same way here. And you know what? Sometimes you're going to deal with agents that are very unethical, that are very shady, that are very rude. And you know what? You just go, okay, guess what? You're probably not going to be in the business very long. Because if you have a listing, you know exactly which agents you don't want to work with, don't you? You know exactly which agents you don't want to work with. So guess what? When that agent represents a buyer and that buyer has the same offer as another agent, this is an easy decision. Boom, this one's going to win. Very important stuff. Very important stuff. All right. That's all I got. That's what I wrote down. Those were kind of my takeaways of what real estate agents can learn from Olympic athletes. Hopefully there was one or two things that uh, helpful there. Again, I apologize for the, uh, the lighting. It's, uh, you know, a little dark in this conference room, but uh, that's all. That is what it is. Hey, Robert. Yes, buddy. Hey, I did not know from uh, Glendora, you can see the ocean. <laughs> It's a clear day. I see. It's a clear day. It's a clear day. Yeah, you know, this is this is straight from Mark and Al's conference room. I can see the ocean straight from here. Uh, let me see. Let me turn around. No, actually, no, I can't. I can't. I see Grand Avenue. <laughs> that's what I see. Uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to no, do? That, that's your background. Your background.